Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 54. This training module, we're going to be taking a look at how to set up and configure a Link CAN based wideband controller. We're going to have a lot to learn. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our Link CAN wideband, how to set up and configure it, and make it work with our G4X systems. Now, before we jump into setting up and configuring our CAN wideband, we have to understand some of the basics within our CAN network, making sure that our wiring is going to be configured properly if we're putting in more than one CAN device on our network. Let's jump in here and take a look at schematics so we can understand some of the basic wiring details that we need to adhere to to make our CAN network function properly. So the very first schematic coming up on screen, this is going to be some of the wiring details that we need to adhere to. This is going to be a generic CAN based wiring schematic, but what we're going to find here is that whether we're working with a G4X system or we're working with another standalone system, the wiring details that we're going to be covering right here are going to be adhered to across any CAN network, even an OEM CAN vehicle that's CAN based. All of the devices on the network have to go and adhere to this type of wiring format. So the first things first within this schematic, we're going to find that we have terminating resistors on either end of the CAN based network trunks. This is going to be the beginning and end of our CAN network. So at the beginning of a CAN network, we have to have a 120 ohm terminating resistor. And at the end or the last device in our CAN network, that's going to have to have a 120 ohm terminating resistor. This signifies the start and stop point of our CAN network. If we don't have a terminating resistor, the CAN, net CAN network may not function properly. So this is one basic detail that we need to keep in mind. We'll talk about how we have this terminating resistor and working with it when we're dealing with the G4X and a couple devices string to it in the next schematic, but let's just keep going in general terms looking at the wiring. Now, one thing about the 120 ohm resistor, it needs to be a quarter watt rating on that resistor or higher. The, the actual resistance though has to be 120 ohm that is going to be specific. Now, the next thing we need to adhere to is the total length of our CAN network or CAN wiring in our CAN network. We have to make sure that it's going to be less than 15 meters in total length. Now it's usually not going to be an issue having it less than 15 meters, but that is going to be the total length that we can have a run of our CAN network. So we have to make sure we're less than 15 meters. The next thing is we're going to notice that the wiring here in our CAN schematic, that's going to be twisted wiring. We have to make sure it's twisted between the CAN low and CAN high wiring in order to make sure that it's going to uh, get rid of any kind of interference that can be brought into the CAN network. Now, in this case, if we're looking at the twist, they have to be about 20 to 30 millimeter between each twist when we're twisting the wiring. So if you're working with um, some of the link CAN wiring and make some plug and play extensions and cables, makes plugging into the CAN network very easily and it takes all this into account. But if you're gonna be wiring things custom for your vehicle, I usually typically wire everything custom. I always make sure I'm adhering to that every twist is going to be 20 to 30 millimeters in its total length. Now, the next thing we also have to keep in mind here is we're looking at the schematic. We have our devices that are branching off our CAN trunks. We don't want those wires between the CAN, the main CAN trunk of wiring, so our twisted pair, to the actual device that's going to be coming off of that CAN trunk. We don't want that being any longer than 200 millimeters away from our main twisted pair of our CAN trunk. If it's any more than that, we can have problems detecting that device. So those are some of the basics that we need to adhere to across any CAN network. As long as we're following along with that, everything should function properly in terms of setting up and configuring any CAN device. Now the next schematic coming up on screen here, this is going to be an illustration of what we'll find is we have a Link G4X box and we have an AIM dash um, they'll have a terminating resistor in the G4X and a terminating resistor in the dash, meaning any device that we're wiring is going to go between our G4X, which is going to be the starting point of our CAN network, and the AIM dash was going to be the ending point of our CAN network. We're able to put any device between these two start and stop points without having to worry about wiring in a terminating resistor. So that's very, very important. Now, when we're talking about a link CAN wideband, if you're running just one link CAN wideband, you do not need a terminating resistor. Although it's good practice to have the terminating resistor after the CAN wideband in the network, we don't need to. 
I'll be demonstrating that here with my Extreme G4X box and a Link CAN wideband module. It's gonna detect it and work just fine. So there are some stipulations with this. If again, you have one CAN cam Lambda that you're gonna be setting up, typically don't need that terminating resistor. But if you're doing multiple CAN Lambda device or a CAN Lambda and let's say another CAN device like a CAN keypad, you will need a terminating resistor so the link can determine and pick up that CAN device on your network or the CAN devices in that case on your network. So just wanted to point that out. Okay, so now let's jump in here and let's take a look at setting up our CAN Y-band. This is extremely simple. What we need to do here before we go in and move any further in the tutorial, this layout that I'm working with here is going to be a new layout I've added into the course folder you can download it. You can, uh, if you download the course packet from our course library for- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.